this video shows you how to build acoustic panels and how to make your room sound better. An acoustic panel frame consists of both the long and the short side of varying lengths bespoke to your requirements. So measure up your wall or the area where you're going to install the acoustic panel and cut to size. The pine woods have been cut bespoke to my requirements at the local store. Materials I would be needing to build the panels are pine wood, D rings, eye hooks, plugs, hanging wire, Stanley knife, backing fabric or burlap, L shaped metal brackets or corner braces, rock wool insulation, Kallax or trinket shelf, acoustic foam which is optional. Drill, hammer, staple gun, glue, quality acoustic fabric or chipper bed sheet alternatives. Pressing iron pliers, masking and measuring tape as well as Phillips head screwdriver. Okay, And this is the backing fabric here. In fabricating them seven panels the first step would be to measure up the pine woods. So 1 to 20 feet, 6 pieces on the short side. The other shot side piece is about 25 feet, 6 off or a quantity of 6. On the long side the pine is about 42.5 feet and it's about 3 off or a quantity of 3. And the subsequent long side is about 48 feet with a quantity of 6 or 6 off. If you require just one acoustic panel, you just need two long sides and two short sides, okay? I actually need this loads of quantities because I'm aiming to build anywhere between 6 to 7 panels. So first take out about seven sheets of rock wool from its packaging. Sandpaper both edges of both the long and the short pine. Hold the long side over the short side on the outside and pilot drill through the equidistant center of both the long and the short sided plank of wood. Use a pilot drill bit whose diameter is slightly smaller than the diameter of the 2 inch screw. So here I will select a 3mm wood bit whose diameter or profile is slightly lesser than the screw. You can see that the thread profile of the screw protrudes from the wood bit. And as such the wood bit would be a good fit for piloting. Repeat and reproduce the process. Pilot all four corners of the acoustic frame. After piloting, apply a small drop of Gorilla Glue between the long and the short side and piloted hole. You can also spread the glue if you want and then subsequently screw in the two inch screw through the long and the short side. Vary the speed of your drill to a slower speed which is switch 1, switch 2 is for drilling. To prevent your drill from going further through the flush profile. And that's pretty much all of your acoustic panels long and short sides coupled together. The next step would be to install four corner brackets on all four corner sides of the frame. You know, pilot drill the holes before you screw down the holes in the respective corners. When pilot drilling, you can also place a tape around the drill bit so that you do not drill past the length of the screw when drilling through um, the wood. So just like I've done here, you know, put some masking tape up until about three quarters or half of the screw so that when pilot drilling, you don't pilot through the wood onto the other side. And so pretty much the masking tape serves as a gauge, you know, so that, you know, you know when to stop drilling through the wood. After piloting, repeat and reproduce the process by screwing down all brackets, okay? The next step of the process would be to cut, you know, through um, the, the backing fabric around the perimeter of the frame that has been fabricated or built. Stretch out the backing fabric and using a staple gun, begin to staple from the center outwardly on all four sides of the frame. Make sure that you stretch out the backing fabric and that the backing fabric isn't sagging. And also, right before you even um, begin stapling, you can apply Gorilla Glue around the perimeter of the um, pine wood before you start stapling to provide reinforcement and if you've missed it you can still apply the glue in between spaces between stapled 
um, bits. Use um, your scissors to trim any excess backing fabric that protrudes from the um, frame of the um, pine wood frame. And this is what I mean here. Apply glue between, you know, them stapled bits. Okay, it's not it's not absolutely necessary step. Just provides reinforcement. But if you need to, if you've missed it, you know, prior to um stapling the backing fabric, you can all you can also do it, you know, after after you've stapled. But you know, preferably do it before you staple if you need to um apply them glue. And then subsequently hammer down any stapled bits that's still protruding. Just make sure that it's flush against um, the frame of the wood and the bark in fabric. Clean out your work area and prep, you know, the front fabric as well as your rock wool insulation slab. Place the rock wool sheet in the assembled backing sheet frame. Cut some flexible rock wool and fill um, gaps in the frame if, if required. Repeat and reproduce the process for other panels and you, as you can see I have applied you know the glue before stapling down. Utilize hand gloves and you know a face mask you know when um, dealing with rock wool. Ensure that you know your work area is well ventilated and cover exposed skin when working in an unventilated area. At this stage, we're pretty much repeating and reproducing the process for the other panels and, you know, filling up, you know, the gaps where we haven't got enough rock wool, you know, within the frame and the backing. And this is what I mean here. If the rock wool um, extends more than the frame, get a standing knife and, and cut out, the, you know, you know, the excess. And, you know, if the rock wool doesn't fit in properly into the frame, you know, you can always patch up you know the the deficit gap with chunks of rock wool so now that you get the hang of it i'm going to repeat and reproduce the process for the rest of them panels which um, i'm not going to be showing every single panel here but you get the idea don't you if you haven't got enough pine wood you know you could utilize um, canvases or picture frames you know just install your install your rock wool you know, onto the base of the backing fabric that's been stapled onto the frame. At a later stage in the video, I would be installing this quality acoustic front fabric cloth panel, which are more expensive than your traditional, you know, conventional um, bed sheets, which I am installing here. To install the front cover on the um, backing and the frame, you know, lay your front cover down, turn the backing and the frame that has got the rock wool in it upside down so that it faces the front cover or, you know, the breathable bedsheet cover, which is what I'm trimming down, okay? If your breathable um, front fabric material is quite light, you know, you can double up on the sides before you staple down. But if it's thick, you know, just staple all the way through. You don't need to apply um, glue at this stage, okay? And, you know, when using bed sheets or cover sheets, you want a material that breathes. So, uh, you know, breathe some air through your material. And if you could feel, you know, the air on the other side of the bed sheet, then, you know, it, it is a good... Um, a material to use for fabricating your acoustic panel. You don't need to double down on your bed sheets. I'm only doubling down here because this material material is very light, you know, so that the staple doesn't come off really easily, but it's still breathable and it's fine, okay? So I've repeated and reproduced the process for other panels, trimmed them accordingly, and these are all them panels that have been um, built the next step of the process would be to install the D rings and the hanging wire at the back of the um, panel. That's the hanging wire and D rings and more corner brackets for more frames. Pilot drill the bark inside frame to install the D rings and the hanging wire. Pilot drill at the equidistant centre, preferably underneath, you know, the cloth. If you drill through the cloth, you know, the drill bit might latch on or catch on to the threading. Then subsequently screw down the D-ring with the screw and your drill. So drilling through the cloth isn't necessarily the best way, but if you haven't got any space underneath, just take care when you're drilling um, through the, um, the cloth and the wood. Measure about a quarter of the length of the frame from the top and, you know, from the width or from the sides and equidistant centre. 
after pilot drilling, you know, screw down the um, screw onto the D-ring so that it latches onto the frame. Vary the speeds, use two to drill and use one to screw down. Repeat and reproduce the process for piloting and screwing down the D-rings on all panels. When drilling down, press the knob on the side and when getting out your drill bit, press the knob on the other side in the opposite direction. Mask your drill bit, you know, you don't need to drill all the way through the um, wood, okay? You just need a, a, a tiny pilot um, hole. Repeat and reproduce the process, screw down all D-rings at the back of the um, acoustic panel. If the screw doesn't go all the way down, talk or hand tighten with the screwdriver. And that may be as a result of the resistance provided by the um, backing and the um, cloth, okay? So use um, a screwdriver to top tighten, you know, the screw down onto the um, O-ring and the um, wood bit. The next step of the process would be to install your hooks and your screws into the wall, you know, using the plug. Use a drill bit that's smaller than the plug that you want to um, push fit into the wall. Measure up, you know, your wall area so that you know exactly where you want, you know, the acoustic panel to be sat on. With the aid of a masking tape and, you know, varying the speed to one, drill through the wall. Stopping at the taped area of the drill bit, insert the plug and use a hammer to flush down the plug against the wall. The next bit would be to screw in your screw or um, your eye hook into the plug that's been inserted in the wall. So if you have got a 6mm plug, you know, pilot drill the hole first and open up the hole to a 5.5mm, okay? So that when you hammer in, you know, your plug into the hole, it's push fit. Get some hanging wire through the D-ring that's been installed at the back of the frame. Run it in loops, you know, a couple of times around, you know, the D-ring. And once you've been able to run some turns around it, twist it around um, in a ribbon-like fashion. You know, just make multiple twists around one end of the, um, of the hanging wire. And once you've been able to achieve a steady um, connection, you can cut out the excess. Or you could use a plier to crimp, you know, the sharp um, edges of the hanging wire. Repeat and reproduce the process on the other side, but make sure that there is some slack, you know, when you're um, coupling, you know, the hanging wire onto the other side of the D-ring. Lift the wire slightly with your hand, you know, to ensure that, you know, um, there is some slack as you want, you know, the um, acoustic panel to breathe, you know, at the back or at the underside. Repeat and reproduce the process for other acoustic panels. And once you've got a steady hanging wire connection at the back of your panels, um, install the acoustic panel onto the um, screw that's been inserted or installed in the wall or onto the eye, eye hooks that's been installed in the plug um, of the wall. The diameter of your screw or eye hook would necessitate the type of plug that you use as the coloured plugs come in various sizes. Repeat and reproduce the process for your eye hooks. You know, use a drill bit that's um, slightly smaller than the eye hook. Pilot drill the hole and open up the hole with the drill bit that you have taped or open up the hole to the final size. OK, and once you've installed your eye hook, you know, install, you know, the acoustic panel with the hanging wire onto it. Drill as many holes as required. Install, you know, your plugs and um, install your hooks or your screws. Keep make sure the plug is flush. OK, and subsequently hang on your um, acoustic panel. And, you know, what if we decide not to use the cost effective, breathable um bed sheet material that we've used on the acoustic panel we can you know get a staple remover you know get the um, breathable clothing or the um, bed sheet material and replace it with an acoustic fabric you know it's a dampening speaker cloth and um, panel exhibition material 
suffice to say the acoustic panels are reusable so if you get tired you know of your front cover or you know your your back cloth you can you can get it off okay and replace it with you know um, the same uh, new material or a slightly more expensive material as we will be doing in this case where we'd be installing the acoustic fabric dampening um, speaker cloth back onto the front cover after having removed um, the the material that we've got in the front cover here so as you can see um you know taking off you know the um, the staples there with um, a staple remover and you know taking out you know the rest of them staples with with the aid of a plier you know them staples that haven't you know fully come off you know the, the pine wood just repeat and reproduce the process for all four corners, you know, take off all them staples, get the front cover off and um, get ready to, um, to install the new acoustic fabric dampening speaker cloth. Run the palm of your hands very gently over the pine wood to see if you've got any staples protruding, okay? Don't hurt yourself, don't pierce your, your, you know, your, your palms, just, you know, your fingers, just make sure if you find any um, staples protruding get apply it and you know take it out okay because sometimes you know them them heads that are broken are not visible easily visible you know to the eyes and as you can see after taking off the front um, cloth or cover the rock wool is still you know sat in place in situ make sure it doesn't drop and you know get the acoustic um, speaker cloth and you know replace it with the obsolete front cover that's been taken off you know, from here onwards, repeat and reproduce the process for the seven off panels that have still got the obsolete front covers stuck on them. And once you're done, you know, taking off the front covers from other subsequent panels, you know, lay the um, panels onto the acoustic fabric speaker cloth and, you know, carry out your measurements just to make sure that you're not wasting, you know, the acoustic fabric. So here I have got a one meter by six meter anthracite grey acoustic fabric dampening speaker cloth that's been laid down on the ground. Three inches of, you know, the acoustic cloth should be able to get, you know, right between the intersection of the um, inner edge of the pine wood, you know, the backing cloth and the rock wall. So ensure that three inches of the acoustic fabric cloth is evenly distributed, you know, on the side or the length of the um, acoustic panel. So that when you staple it on, it's not uneven and you do not waste um, excess um, cloth. And as you can see, I'm checking to make sure that it's, you know, it's evenly distributed and I repeat and reproduce the process for the other four corners and on, you know, also on subsequent acoustic panels. So the next step of the process would be to cut three inches of acoustic fabric on all corners of the acoustic panel with the aid of a trim scissors. Just trim the fabric bespoke to whatever you know, size of acoustic panel, you know, that you've got, just make sure that it's even on the sides and that it latches, you know, properly onto the pine wood, okay? And once we've successfully replicated or repeated and reproduced the process on all four sides of the acoustic panel, the next step of the process would be to impress, you know, the, um, the acoustic fabric onto the sides of the pine wood, okay, then staple it um, all through. Like I said previously, it's best to start the staple, you know, from the center, then, you know, spread out the staples so that you can easily stretch out, you know, the acoustic fabric where you need to. Um, and that's because you've, you've given yourself room to start from the center. Once you're done, you know, stapling, you know, all through the perimeter of the acoustic panel where you've got the acoustic fabric latching onto the pine wood. The next step would be to fold, you know, the acoustic fabric on the um, breadth or the width of the acoustic panel in a square ribbon-like um, fashion, um, so that aesthetically it looks quite pleasing. Just make sure that you shoot about two or three pins, you know, at the corner, because, you know, the folding makes it more thicker, so it gives it more, you know, strength um, when you apply two or more pins, you know, at the edges, you know, if, a thick, if you've got a thick acoustic fabric there, you might, you know, you might want, want to run two or three more pins at the edges, you know, to, to make it latch properly onto the pine wood. And once you're done installing the staple pins, you know, keep it flush with the aid of a hammer. So, you know, just 
any protruding staple pins, you know, just run it down with the aid of a hammer, you know. So once done, flushing the pins down, repeat and reproduce the process for other panels and this is what you get, okay? And as you can see, on the smaller acoustic panel, I have used two pieces of clothing and that's because I didn't want the acoustic cloth um, to go to waste, they're quite expensive, so, you know, it's not necessary, but you can put, you know, Velcro in there, you know, get some super glue, you know, stick it on there and um, that should keep, you know, the um, fabric in check. But, you know, if the fabric had extended way into the um, the panel, I wouldn't really need Velcros there, okay? So it's pretty much up to you. You can use them. You can decide not to use them, okay? The only reason why I have used them is that the excess piece of clothing is close out to the edge as opposed to close out to the midway section of the acoustic panel. And in other cases where I've got the acoustic fabric stretching you know, into the midsection, you know, I've just used some super glue and some Velcro to, um, to provide that extra, you know, protection or seal, you know, for the panel so that, you know, it's not flapping or, you know, not coming off, but, you know, it's pretty much up to you. You don't need to do this. Okay. I'm just salvaging as much of the acoustic fabric as I can. And that's, you know, what the back of the acoustic panel looks like. Once you're finished, you can see the back clothing of the burlap. Um, you can see that the rebounds, you know, have been, you know, fitted properly. And, you know, this, this process is pretty much open to improvisation. So if you've got like picture frames, you can use them or canvases. And if, if you've got extra bits of rock wool that are just lying all over the place, you could get, you know, strings off your burlap, you know, to keep it into position because you've got chunks there and not the square bit of rock wool. Get the front cover, staple it on, and that's pretty much your um, acoustic panel sorted. And if we flip the acoustic panels 90 degrees over, you can see that it looks a lot more aesthetically pleasing as opposed to the more cost effective um, bed sheet. So whatever budget you're working to, you can always work your way around them panels. A 2D or 3D diffuser could be somewhat expensive to fabricate. So I've utilized the leftover bits of the rock wool, cut pieces of towels, you know, chuck the rock wool in and super glued it together, you know. So I've put each individual um, towel, rock wool, towel glued pieces in their respective square slot holes in the trinket. So I've utilized this diffuser to treat and um, base sounds at the back wall. And, you know, if you're working on a budget, you can also utilize your bookshelf or a calax, you know, stock it in with books like I've done here, as this would help to diffuse or absorb, you know, the low frequency bass sounds, which is what we're really worried about. And better still, if you've got a calax that run from top to bottom of your back wall, the better. Isolation in your room is not easy to overcome as it can be quite expensive. You know, it's got hidden costs, you know, the resale value is an issue, you know, the construction needs permits. So when acoustically trying to treat your room, you have to be um, as ingenious as possible with your budget. You can treat or make your front wall soft by getting acoustic panels behind each speaker. You can also fabricate and install bait straps at, you know, the top and bottom corners or wherever you've got corners, you know, in the room to help tame or absorb those booming frequencies. Seal any airspace so that sound does not leak out. You can use special caulking that has got a shelf life of over 10 years or green glue or acoustic potty. Sound isolation requires mass and air, so treat your room like an aquarium. Seal around skating boards, anywhere you've got gaps, you know, or holes or crevices, seal that, you know, the, the apertures in the room um, to help with the isolation. So the idea is to treat your studio as an aquarium, so I'm sealing the gaps, you know, um, at the skating boards, around the corners, and visual inspecting all the nooks and crannies identifying anywhere there is an airspace and sealing off you know the airspace it is the low frequencies that bug people and not the high frequencies 
the smaller the room, the more the reflection in the room. A square or rectangular room does not make a good sound control and performance room. And that's because we need to take into account how far a wave is deflected by the time it gets to the opposite wall. So pretty much what I mean by this is that, you know, a square room means more standing waves, you know, bad echoes and ringing. This isn't a square room, but it is a small room. So I'm also worried about, you know, reflections in the room. But, you know, we're working to budget here. We have to make use of what we've got, okay? If you've got a square room, you may want to reduce the effect by utilizing resonators, panel traps, or you might want to splay the entire wall. And if you're not improvising when sealing off gaps, you know, in the studio, you could utilize the painter's tape and the Fuji kit to give it a more aesthetically looking and um, pleasing look. The next step would be to install the eye hooks, you know, insert the plugs, you know, into the wall and, you know, mount the acoustic panels. You only need about three acoustic panels mounted. If you're worried about low frequencies, you can treat your front wall by making it soft, you know, by adding like two more acoustic panels. And here, just by looking at this utility storage room, you can see that the trinket needs to cover the whole of the back wall. OK. And not just the square perimeter, you know, on the back wall. And here, you only need three panels, you know, within the reflection free zone. So, wherever your speakers are facing from the front wall is where you make soft or is where you place your panels. You know, we take audio cues from the reflections off the floor. It doesn't matter if you've got concrete, wood or carpet. Um, just make sure that it's not too dead. As if you've got no reflections off the floor, it means that the room is way dead, okay? And as you can see, one of the downsides of working in a confined space is that you cannot adequately decouple your monitor. And as you can see, I have decoupled the monitor with an acoustic foam and towel off the floor. But if I had more headroom, I would have been able to utilize a decoupling stand, okay? So I have decoupled the monitors with rock wool and acoustic foam. But, you know, if you've got headroom, you can use a decoupling stand. And these are some of the tools that were utilized in the acoustic panel build. You know, you could also use, you know, acoustic foam, but, you know, it pretty much does nothing for the low frequency cycles. As the foam is quite thin, it could help, you know, acoustic cycles of a thousand and above. OK. And, you know, to stick it on the wall, you could get some command Velcro 3M stickers. OK. Peel off the adhesive covering, you know, stick it onto the back of the acoustic foam and then, you know, you could stick it onto the wall. But, you know, mind you, um, sometimes you may get, you know, your paint peeling off when you're taking off the um, um, the acoustic foam. But, you know, the command strips, you know, reduce the effects of paint peeling off a considerable length. OK. And lastly, isolation connotes mass and airspace. So if you've got a wall, airspace and a wall, um, then you'd have better isolation. To achieve the wall mass and the airspace involves a lot of construction and it's quite expensive. So utilize the um, acoustic treatment techniques that have been highlighted previously. And you should be able to improve the isolation capabilities of your studio. And that's about it really. Don't forget to subscribe, like and share. Helps the channel grow and hopefully catch up with you later. Goodbye.